Everybody, TC Bradley, host of God Made Millionaire TV, the hottest show on television. And I've been waiting all week for you, yes you, to stop on by and watch our show. And what a show we've got lined up for you today. Waiting on set, we have best-selling author Peter Blount. Peter co-authored a new book with Brian Tracy called Pay It Forward. The world's leading entrepreneurs and professionals reveal their biggest lessons to help you achieve great wealth, health, and success. Because of that accomplishment, Peter will now be recognized by the National Academy of Best-Selling Authors. So without any further ado, let's crack open the God Made Millionaire Bank Vault. And let's activate some God-given dreams. Peter, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. What Bless an you. honor and a privilege to uh, have you on our show today. I was thrilled when you agreed to come on our show. Here's what I have to ask you right from the jump. Okay. World class athlete. Yes, sir. Yet <laughs> you didn't get any scholarship offers at the start of that. How in the world? I can't even compute how that even happens. Take us into that story. I think it's very rare, and I'm very happy that it happened to me. Um, uh, I was a, a guy that was a pretty good high school athlete, uh, very good in football, basketball, and baseball, but I started to run cross country, which is one of the, what they considered back then, quote unquote, a minor sport. And uh, I went away from football where I was a star, basically. And baseball, I made the all-star teams in the leagues that I played in. And I played some basketball also in school, made the teams. But I went after cross country because it was a challenge. And I think that might have attributed to me not being recruited because, to be honest with you, when I started out, I just wasn't that good. But I continued to work and train. However, it did make me better for track and field, which was my primary sport, which is why I went to cross country. Upon graduating or being a senior, um, as you said, I had no scholarship offers. At that time, I took an independent study course in school and I studied exercise physiology and I learned a little bit about training. So I kind of took it personal when I didn't get any scholarship offers. I trained over the summer and I walked on at uh, what is now Texas A&M Commerce. Shout out to your alma mater. Uh, yeah, well, that, that's where I started school, <laughs> go, go Texas A&M Commerce. And uh, what I did from there is I came back home to Florida after a year. I did make the team and they offered me a partial scholarship, but there were family problems there. I decided personally that I wasn't gonna run anymore. And uh, I, I must mention uh, Frank Craig, who was a guy that I found out later sold my mom and dad the property that we built our house on. Ended up being a high school volunteer coach with tremendous experience. He was just, I think, around the age of 72 at the time. And when I got back, I was jogging around the track and he was out there and he called me over and told me he just got the head coaching job at Brevard Community College then, Eastern Florida State. And when he told me that, he immediately asked me, did I want to run? And I said, no, coach, I'm done. I'm here to help the family. He said, well, consider it because you're gonna get your degree anyway. Well, I did tell him about a week later that I would run. And uh, I ended up uh, making the junior college indoor All-American team and the outdoor All-American team. And that was kind of the gateway to me accepting scholarship to the University of Florida among a lot of offers. So from someone who wasn't recruited initially, it was just by the grace of God that he gave me the wisdom and the mindset and the passion to train, to be able to be ready for the opportunity that came along. Wow, what was that defining moment? Because we have so many that are tuning in right now and maybe they're in a similar situation that you were placed. You know, I always had faith. And um, I think it's important that when you don't feel anybody else is believing in you, that you reach down and understand that you have a purpose. And I knew deep down inside that I was capable of doing something at a great level. And I knew it was in athletics. And in my heart, the desire was to run, even though I probably could have played football, 
probably could play baseball or any of the other sports. I really wanted to run. So with that passion, I knew that it could take me somewhere of no, nothing else but a scholarship to finish my education. So I would say to really first have a relationship with God because he's the one that gives you the hope for you. And I really cling to that. You know, I think back a lot to one Sunday morning in church. You know, we all have our church stories from the parents that we grew up with who kind of had us to go to church and <laughs> didn't quite understand it all the time when we were kids. But I can remember sitting in the back pew and there was this lady, special speaker that came that Sunday and she was prophetic. So they said, and I, this lady doesn't know what she's doing. You know, I'm really not that old, but I could even in my mind think that somebody could know what someone else is doing. But that played a role because she pointed to me and I had to be probably about eight or nine. And she said, that young man back there. And, uh, you know, I was little, everybody's trying to see who she was. And I didn't even know she was talking to me. And so they finally moved out of the way and she points to me and said, one day, you're gonna represent the United States in, in a sport. You're gonna be an athlete. And uh, that kind of stuck with me. When I was denied initially a full scholarship, that seed that was planted wow. was growing. And speak hope, I think, in others' lives. And I think for the individual, you have to study, you have to pray, and you have to listen. Because if I was not paying attention to what that lady said, or even after that, all of the confirmations that I got through the word, it never would have manifested. And I think that's really the key. If we do that, and then of course we have to act. And that's really what my whole message is about. You know, basically studying, praying, and listening, and then acting on, on what you're given from that seed of hope. And I think that's the key to realizing who you are in purpose. That's a, an amazing story how words spoken over your life at such a young age that the world would think was a random word, but it was a mm -hmm. word of life, of encouragement. And you said something there that you held on to that word that was given in church. Years later, you still held on to that word. In the chapter I wrote in the book, clinging was a word that was commonly used as I researched the topic that I was addressing. So that's true. I think we must cling because I think it's the essence of endurance. And I think if we cling, it helps us to endure until we get to the next level or the next maturation level of where God wants to take us. And we're all on a journey, as they say, we're pilgrims passing through. So on that journey, we are going from place to place and it's test to test. And if we cling to that hope, I think, it'll enable us to arise and just take hold of what God wants us to do. I wanna talk about your best-selling book, but before we get off of this track, mm -hmm. I wanna ask you this question. Okay. Between you and I, right here, and just you and I talking right now. Okay. The defining factor between a world-class athlete mm -hmm. and an athlete, an mm -hmm. athlete, mm -hmm. Certainly, talent would be a deciding factor. You'd, you would assume that talent would be a deciding factor. But what do you think separates an athlete from a world-class athlete? Is it, is it talent? Is it skill set? Because, listen, there's people that are way more talented right now definitely more talented than me, than me. <laughs> and they're on the side of the road now busted yeah, disgusted yeah. can't be trusted give up on their yeah. god-given dream yeah. Yeah. and and there's people right now going that's good for him but it's not yeah. for me yeah. what is that thing that is there mm -hmm. something that you yeah. can point to that yes. separates the you know that makes a michael jordan who was yeah. Yeah. who was cut yeah. by his basketball team yeah. imagine that yeah. <laughs> but is there something mm -hmm. inside of a world-class athlete? Is it a mindset? Is it an attitude that refuses to be denied? Is it, is it something that you could pinpoint? It is, and I, I believe um, that's been my quest uh, because I know how I felt when I was told that uh, there was no scholarship offers. 
and I know how I felt when I was named captain at a major university. Two total ends of the spectrum. And I really don't wish that other end where I was told I wasn't on anyone. So my quest was always, once I made it, to go and teach others about it. And you pose the question, and I think the answer is, it's in studying and praying. And uh, with that comes a lot of benefits. And I had to become a student, basically. A lot of people don't wanna be students. They wanna get up out of the classroom. I can say this because I have a background in education. I have uh, over 30 years in education, but they wanna get up out of the, the, the seat. And I think the people who are successful are the ones who actually taken a seat. That means they're preparing, they're studying the word, they're praying, or they have someone influential around them. That's why we're so important. That's why your show is so important that they can reach out and say, hey, look, this is what you need to be doing, not what you should do. This is what you need to be doing. And once we come back in our seat and we sit down and we humble ourselves and we're the student and we listen, which is one of those things I talk about all the time, praying, studying, and listening, we have a master teacher standing right there in front of us. Amen. Who's giving us everything we need. And all we need to do is be a great student. And I think to answer your question, the people who have gone on in sports to do those things, I just watched the Olympics and you hear great stories, but if you look behind them, they were students. They sat and they listened to somebody who was influenced spiritually and they listened and they obeyed, they followed it. It's one thing for my coach or anybody that I was influenced by to tell me something, but I had to actually do it. And I think that's the difference between an athlete and a world-class athlete. The world-class athletes are students. They sit down, they're obedient, they humble themselves, and they listen to a master teacher who then guides them to levels they thought they would ever be. Ever since publishing my book, Supernatural Success, we have been blown away by the testimonials we received from people just reading the book. There's a businessman that generated $300,000 into his checking account within 45 days of reading and applying the principles that I teach in Supernatural Success. There's a stay-at-home mother generated $10,000 in the month of December, just by reading the first three chapters. I've always wondered what would happen if I actually took the time to deep dive on the principles that I talk about in Supernatural Success. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited to let you know that I've done that. We've put together a powerful video masterclass where I dive in to the Supernatural Success principles that you can use to activate success and prosperity in your life and in your business. I wanna encourage you not only to get the book, but to deep dive in our Supernatural Success video masterclass, a powerful, powerful teaching on Supernatural Success. One module, one moment, one instruction can change your life forever. Peter, if you'll take a moment right now, because we have a lot of fans of the show, a lot of young people tune into this show to get inspiration. Mm -hmm. There are people right now that are watching, and I want you to speak to the young people. If you would take a moment and do that during the show right now, speaking to that camera, to that young person that maybe doesn't have the quite the talent level, they've got yeah. the heart, they've got more heart yeah. than talent, and they have that dream to be a world-class athlete. Just take a moment, if you would, sir, and speaking to that camera okay. to our young people right uh, now that, that need a word from you, that will listen to you because you're right where they are right now. Amen. I would say to all the young people, uh, man, there is a different time now than when we were growing up. And that's really the first thing that everyone says that, that I've heard uh, in, in education, throughout my coaching, that there are different times now, but there's one thing that hasn't changed, and that's God and, and His Son, Jesus. I would say uh, in your day-to-day -day life, uh, there's gonna be some times where you feel like you're alone. There are some times you're gonna, not gonna walk the same road or the same path as everyone else. 
I felt that way. There were certain things my parents did not allow me to do. And there are certain things that they did me allow, allow me to do, but I was usually one of the few that was doing it. Never feel like you're alone. That's why it's important for you to establish a personal relationship with God. I know it sounds very, very, very plain, and it sounds like it's not good advice, but that's the first thing you need to do, is to establish a personal relationship with God. If you don't know how to do it, if you continue to tune into this show, and you go to someone who is very inspirational to you and ask them how to do it, you just accept Christ into your life. The next thing you need to do is to continue to pray. It's just a simple conversation with God, and He will actually guide you to what you need to do. So don't pay attention to the noise around you. Focus on your relationship with God, establish your relationship with God, continue to pray, and listen to people who have done what you want to do in a character-building way. That's the way to do it. You won't be sometimes the most popular person, but you'll be the happiest and you'll be the one that is fulfilling what God wants you to do on this earth. And in the end, that's all that matters. So continue to press towards and no matter what anyone else says about you, keep your chin up just as I had to when someone told me that I didn't have any scholarship offers. Just keep your chin up and know in your heart and mind that you're capable of doing something spectacular, something miraculous because we can do all things through Christ. Well said. Peter, Thank well you. said. I want to transition into the best-selling book that you have. Tell us more about your book. Okay. Well, the chapter that I wrote in the book was just a blessing to me. It was on the heels of three traumatic things in my life where it was three years of me just soul searching and, and just finding out uh, what God wants me to do and, and who I am. And uh, I can remember one day I went to visit my dad's grave. It's Father's Day. And I was gonna go there after service, church service, but I couldn't miss it. I drove past church service and uh, something uh, just beckoned me. So I went and um, I stood at his, at, at his grave and I start to pray and, and cry and just thank him for what he's done as a father. I think a lot of times we, we don't understand uh, what a father does. I just cried and thanked him. But when, as I was doing that, I heard a, a still small voice say, uh, it's not over. And at that time I was in, as I said, the midst of, of trauma in my life. My mom was in the fourth stage of cancer. Um, I was in an accident and was experiencing uh, family marital issues at, at all at the same time. And that voice said, it's not over. I kind of shook my head and, and, and almost in my subconscious said, huh? It said it again. And uh, I just fell to my knees and just started crying because I needed to hear that. And now I know why I went past that church and went there. That led to the title of the chapter, It's Not Over. That chapter wow. basically spells out some of the things that we've talked about when people are facing tests in their lives or trials, some people call them, how to prepare. You know, a long time ago, I used to teach SAT prep courses and I had one of the largest testing prep classes in Orlando. I would do it in between the bobsledding and, and the track and field. I'd come home and I'd do my SAT prep classes. I had 50 students at a time from various high schools. And, and one of the things I remember with those kids, they were very bright, very smart, but they had diff a difficult time passing that test. So I, I thought and prayed, I said, you know what? It's just like us when we have tests in our lives. There's a technique, there's a way that we have to carry ourselves in our mind and our, our heart that will enable us to get through that test. So they had techniques to pass that. And what that chapter is and that book is not over are techniques for us to face our trials and our tests in life. It's basically a, 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 not really a formula because you never know what God is gonna throw at us. Right. But it is a way for us to keep walking in faith. In other words, we have to be faith learners as I term it in the book. And uh, if you learn if you learn of what the tests are, or at least 
the substances of the test, you will be better suited in facing the test. And that's why I think it's so important in, in, in today's life is to spread the word and the instruction on that don't believe because you are a believer that you're never going to have a trial or a test. You will have them, and some of them are huge. It's how your mind is. But it's not over. Test. Never over. Never you see, over. there's people <laughs> right now, Peter, all over in 200 nations that have tuned in, and God has raised you up to give that message Amen. that it's not over. It's not over. Regardless of what you may not have over. gone through and been through Amen. in your life, it is not over. Not over. Amen. Listen, I want you to talk about a concept really quick okay. about the blue clay. Okay. Tell All us right. the story behind the blue clay. Okay. Blue clay is the name of, of the organization that I have. We have blue clay financial services and we have blue clay leadership development, which is a coaching. And basically blue clay came from uh, my knowledge of, of mining diamonds in South Africa. And the initial way to mine to the diamonds or the goal was to get to the yellow clay. If you reach the yellow clay, you were considered very successful. And of course, with it came the riches. And as I read further into it, I found out there were some people who continued to dig. Why? I think it has a lot to do with our lives. Uh, as we get to certain points in our lives, why stop? Continue to move forward in the Lord. But these other people kept digging. I guess they figured if there were diamonds there, there might be more underneath. Well, indeed it was. And they got to clay that was blue. And it multiplied tremendously over the number of diamonds in the yellow clay. And even though they thought they were rich with the yellow diamonds, they were wealthy immensely through generations with the blue clay. And I use that to basically say that in our faith, that we don't need to have the faith where we stop. And it's the kind of fly by night faith where we're okay one minute and then we're bemoaning the second minute. We're losing hope, uh, we're depressed, that type of thing. But we are continuing to dig, meaning studying, praying, listening. We're continuing to do the work of the Lord. And if we keep digging, we'll eventually get to blue clay. So that's where the connotation blue clay comes from. Well, I love that. I, I, I believe that God is calling people, his people, to go to the blue clay where generational Amen. wealth yes. and prosperity yes. lie. It's not yes. in the yellow clay. No. He's calling us to go a little bit deeper. A little deeper. Amen. Those are you that are watching right now and you're saying, I've gone as far as I can go. No. No. Go a little no, bit haven't. deeper. No. Deeper. And even the people resting on their laurels, there's a, always another level yes. that you can go at. And yes. you're talking about a level that has generational wealth. Yes, it. It, it doesn't stop. Uh, and when it does, someone will carry it on. As you said, it's a legacy. And, and my feeling is if we're still breathing, we need to keep digging. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Peter, we're almost out of time right now, my brother. But before you go, I know I had you speak earlier to the young people, but I want you to take a moment in our closing moments of the show and, and just look into the camera, speak to those 200 nations, because we have so many people right now yeah. all across the world that are going through some hard times and they need a message of hope <laughs> and inspiration. So take, take your time and speak to the nations, sir. One of the, the words that stand out in, in, in the Bible that I were, read was hope does not disappoint. And um, in, in my trials, I, I man, I, I just fed off of that. Hope does not disappoint. So as long as I have hope, I can continue to move. And the biggest thing is hope enabled me to continue to write, to read, and to study, and to pray. And when you don't have anything else, Please do that. The good Lord will send someone or something your way that I call them out of the blue moments. Out of the blue, here comes something. The old people in my church used to sing a song says, there's a lily in the valley and it's bright as a morning star. Someone else said it's always darkest before the dawn. So whatever you're going through, 
Whatever you're feeling is definitely not over. Continue to be diligent in studying, praying, listening, and acting with your heart and mind. Whatever the good Lord gives you from those things, go ahead and act, and over time, you will win because it's never, ever over. Do not give up. Hope never disappoints. Amen. Peter, we're out of time, but will you come back and see me again? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Great being here. Hey, Peter, you know what? Uh, we are out of time. We're at the part of the show okay. that we always do the prosperity dance. We oh throw boy. our shades on. Okay. You got shades? I have shades. Do you have attitude? I have that. Okay, well, we're going to throw our <laughs> shades on. I'm going to give you the honor okay. to tell Big Mike to hit his music. Yes, sir. And let's do a prosperity dance right now. Sometimes at home, you got to throw your shades on, throw some attitude on with it, and do your own prosperity dance. Let's hey. show them how it's done. All righty. Big Mike, hit my music. You know, JL, I believe that God is going to raise up a thousand God made millionaires, at the least, uh, through our God made millionaire movement with what we're doing, with our show, with our coaching services, with everything that we're doing at God made millionaire. But people need support along the way. So that's why we've created the God made millionaire inner circle. Right, God Made Millionaire Inner Circle is where you get the opportunity to get coaching and training by myself and TC Bradley. I've been mentored by T.C. Bradley for over 16 years and I've seen, I saw the need for having a coach. For 16 years, there's, there's times where I procrastinated, there's times where I felt unmotivated and discouraged and T.C. was there right by my side to give me the coaching and the mentoring that I needed to step up. And now it's your turn to get that same mentoring and coaching as well with the God Made Millionaire Inner Circle. You know, JL, that's the number one request that we get is people want coaching, but they want affordable coaching. Right, and the God Made Millionaire Inner Circle will give them just that. And not only that, but the God Made Millionaire Inner Circle is very interactive. So it's not something where you just listen to us pontificate. You're actually going to get in the trenches with us, and we're going to put you on the hot seat and be able to look at your business and coach you and mentor you through your purpose. J.L., what's pontificate mean? You use some big <laughs> words. What's they that know mean? what it means. They can Google it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you've been given a God-given dream, this is the place. If you're one of the thousand God-made millionaires that God is raising up in this season, you need to be a part of the God-made millionaire inner circle.